Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and this is Transport Fever, the One Hub Let's Play Speed Build series. And um, I hope you forgive me for starting on pause here, which I probably actually do um, reasonably often, to be honest. But it's always nice to start with a moving train, isn't it? Because that's... That's why we love this game. Trains moving, in and out of stations, busy, busy, stuff going on. Anyway, I've stopped this here because um, it's highlighting three things which are important um, in, well, the series and in this episode in particular. First off, uh, as you may recall, of course, the, the conceit of this series is an attempt to get a city. Um, <laughs> and I'm focusing on one city in particular, so it better be the city I'm looking at that does this, will actually reach a population of 10,000. It's possible. Um, I don't know if you need to sort of tweak or cheat the game at all, or if there's certain sort of mechanisms you can use to, to ensure you reach that level, I don't know. I'm kind of just playing this, um, well, <laughs> the way I normally play the game, uh, we'll see whether it works or not. Um, but the other sort of conceit in particular of this series is that uh, the town has just, um, is, is the hub of the entire network. It is a bit in one corner of the map. Um, as you can see here, the map goes all the way over there. Um, so it's probably not the best place for the continental hub, as it were. But hey ho, that's what I've decided to do. Um, so as you can see, uh, we're in 1921. Uh, we started in 1900, if I remember correctly, and the town has well, it's more than doubled its size. It's now 1,517 people in total. Uh, if you look at the graphs, that's a nice steady incline. It goes up and down a little bit as the town develops, um, as it knocks down buildings to put new roads in and stuff. You, you know how it works, so that's doing quite nicely. Um, as you can see here, I've not been making profit over the last few years. Um, although I am making a fair amount of money, so the income is quite good. Uh, last year was, well, around 20 million, like, well, just over 20 million in, in real numbers, but in sort of truncated figures, 20 million, nice round figure. Um, and, I, um, and I still lost money that year because I'm still spending a lot on new trains and stuff. Um, but the fact that I've got such a, a good income now is very heartening, which means I can start spending money. Um, <laughs> on on the sort of confidence that I will recoup that money um, as within a year or two of, of doing that. So that's all looking quite good. I'm quite happy with that. And the final thing, which is why I've stopped here, is this train. Now, there's been a couple, um, discussion on the actual comments on the previous videos, and I also made reference to this in the last episode, is my choice of train, or rather my choice of locomotive. I was working on the assumption that if you had a locomotive which had good pulling power and moderately good speed, then that would be the best one to use um, for longer trains, rather than a really fast locomotive with <laughs> very poor pulling power. I was going to be slightly expletive there, but I decided not to, with very poor pulling power. Now, so this is the Mikado. Uh, there it is, if I put my cursor, there it is, the 282 Mikado, which has really nice pulling power. It's quite a powerful locomotive. It's not very fast, though, and actually costs a lot of money to maintain. We go in here and just look at the replacements, just to remind ourselves, the Mikado, it costs 2.85 million to buy, and it costs nearly 500k per year. Compare that with the Atlantic, which costs a mere 1.73 million to buy, and costs oh, not more than half that, but 288k per year, and it goes faster despite the fact it's less powerful locomotive. And what we've come to realise is that speed counts. The way the system works is you get paid on the theoretical maximum speed of the train. So that's the locomotive and the carriages, the maximum speed that that consist can, can achieve. Um, so you get paid on that, although the costs are per month based on whatever distance you travel. Um, so you're always being charged the cost, 
um, and the income is based on the price. And the game, the game sort of rules, the maths in the game, the calculations aren't quite balanced. I can't properly explain it. There are other people <laughs> that have, have done that for us on the forums. And, and George made the great comment in the previous video um, about this as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace these Mikados with Atlantics. So that's one thing I'm going to do. And that should be quite easy and cheap. In fact, I can probably do it right now, can't I? Uh, so let's get rid of the Mikado uh, from there. And put the Atlantic in. There you go. So uh, the, the one thing about this consist is that the wagons I'm using, the carriages I'm using, do actually only go up to 50 miles an hour. Um, so they're not making full use of the speed of the train. But for the time being, because I don't want to spend that much on these um, more expensive wagons, I'm going to live with that for the moment and just benefit from the reduced cost of the Atlantic. So 288 as opposed to 476 per year. It's, it's almost a no-brainer, isn't it? So that's what we're doing. So on that one line, uh, if I can... I you see, it only cost me 286 to replace two trains. <laughs> That's impressive, isn't it? Which means I still need to actually take money out. So we'll do that and replace those. What that means is I can get the game moving. Okay. Uh, so he's um, mediocre. Yeah, he's reasonable speed. Right, now, although there's lots of passengers piling up here, so I will be addressing passengers quite shortly. What I've decided to do is tackle some of my junctions. This one in particular, this uh, brown line here, uh, if you can just about make it out, this brown, oops, this brown line here cuts across that. So that's a, a freight train cutting across a very busy passenger route. I'm going to replace that with a bridge. Um, this whole setup here is a bit untidy. I want to improve that. And something else I've really come to appreciate, actually quite recently, although it was kind of obvious a while ago, but someone actually said it, which just made me say, well, yeah, you're absolutely right, that is what I've been seeing, that is true, is this business here. I've got two train routes carrying food out from this uh, processing plant to Mitchell Butte and Horse Pasture. They're doing okay, but they're not getting the best deal. The best deal is got by the trucks here because trucks are cheaper than trains. So the economy of the game thinks, oh, cheap cargo route. I'm going to send all the possible con cargo I can to that route. So these trucks are getting all the cargo and these poor trains are getting a fraction of what they could get. So the next thing I'm going to do is replace that truck stop with a cargo station. So all my freight coming out of this little sort of mini hub thing here is delivered to each town by train. There'll then be a sort of last mile, as you call it, truck delivery into the appropriate commercial or industrial area. But the freight coming out from this factory will all be sent out by train. So we should all get a fair share, a fair shake of the, uh, the freight loot, if you will, coming out of here. Uh, on those three train routes and I'll change that to, to do something else <laughs> eventually probably so that's what we're looking forward to I'm going to stop talking pretty soon um, is that the new Atlantic? no that's the we've probably missed that train coming out haven't we? oh is that yes that is you four months old are you? I thought you were that was you that's you. That's the new train, isn't it? Well, let's get up and close and personal to you. Right, so I'll replace that road vehicle as well. Right, so I'm going to switch into the speed build section very soon and uh, deal with those junctions, set that up and, um, yeah, sort that out and probably replace a few more old trays with some really funky new Atlantics um, to uh, well, increase my speed, basically, and profit. So... I will leave you for now um, and hand you over to the soundtrack, um, but I will be with you again in the next episode. Um, if you enjoyed this, do leave us a like. If you've got any suggestions, recommendations, criticisms, anything you want to say, drop a note into the comments box below, of course. It would be great to hear from you. And if you've not done so already, why not subscribe? And then you will learn whenever I upload another one of these or any of my other Let's Play videos. But from me, Ajax Post, here in Transport Fever, 
I will see you soon, but until then, bye bye for now.